So at this point, we've created a Google Plus account. Let's start to add some content, which should entice people to then start to follow. So we'll look at about two or three different ways to post content. And here's going to be one of them first. This is the one posting content to everyone, quote unquote, which is no one at the moment because we have no followers. Later we'll get more specific. Let's go back wherever you're at. Let's go to the home screen just so that we're all on the same, on the same page. And um, what you can look at for inspiration because you're going to think at a certain point, what, what do I post again? Uh, I don't recall if I mentioned with Twitter, but you want to do this frequently. Um, the best would be that you post something every day, but that's a lot to ask for. Eventually, you're going to get into writer's block. So once a week is a good compromise. Think of something at some point of the week, one day a week, post something. What to post? Well, that's always the question. But this inspiration here that we're getting from trending could give you ideas. And as we use this further and it understands our topics better, it'll give us better inspiration for us to post. But at the moment, let's say we have no inspiration. We get a button, we get a, we get a, a little bar at the top here. It's not quite obvious, I think, but it says, what's new with you? And there's a button for a picture. Don't click the picture button yet. Just click on the text, what's new with you? That's the, they're trying to you know, make it more personable rather than, than a status update. They're making it say, what's new with you? So if you click on that, it pops up here to post something. The, the anatomy of this little box is also pretty complex, even though it doesn't seem like it. We've got the name of your business here. We're about to post this public. So anyone on Google Plus could see this. Anyone on Google Search could see this. Because there's a search in Google Plus, and there's, a, of course, Google Search. Google Plus Search only searches inside the network of Google Plus, obviously. Google Search searches all over the world, every single website. So here, we're, if we post whatever here, it'll be public to anyone. We have the option, look at that, targeted to the individual groups. So when I make groups and say, I want to send this to the gluten-free aficionados, they're the ones that are going to be interested in this thing that I'm about to post, and it says you're targeting it to them only they will see it. This is sort of how you, you make literally that small group of people. This is not public. Um, the same sort of way the, that, that we did for the other way. Um, right? We've got public for everyone, and here I've said just focus it on these, on this group. If I click done, it's just going to go to that group. It's not going to be public with a regular search. Victor, is this um, equivalent to like groups in Facebook? Yes, very similar to that. The big question then for the class is, how many of you uh, have heard of groups on Facebook? Raise your hand. Very few people. So Facebook has a system like this. It's been around longer. People don't know about it. Some of us that maybe are in more of the know of social media know about it, but even we're like, it's not as big as a, as a draw on Facebook. Here though, on Google Plus, it can definitely be more effective. And you can mix and match. I can say, let's send this over to the gluten-free people and the VIPs. You can put more than one, sure. Later, as we also create collections, communities, and other things, we'll be able to also select over here. Because we could select individual people as well. It's not quite obvious, but if I delete this and I start writing a person's name, it can go directly to people. I don't use that as much for personal or business. I don't. I think this is too specific. But you can easily find uh, use case scenarios for this. But here I'm sending something directly to someone, and in a sense this is sort of like private messaging because I'm only sending it to that one person, which I can also mix with team members. I'm sending it to that one customer and the rest of the people on the team. Usually you'll be posting public, but if you need to target, if you need to target, you will be able to, to do so. We have a spot to actually write some text. We can attach a picture, we can attach a whole album. 
I don't believe there's a limit here. You can attach like 50 pictures if you wanted. Uh, we'll look at adding a picture in a little bit. We can attach an, a link, that one's also useful, and a location. So very similar to what we saw with Twitter. Let's just start off very basic. What's new with you? We will say, happy to be on Google Plus, finally. But again, this might not be the best type of update, the best type of post. It's not quite thinking about it in terms like I said last week, which was think in terms of posting content that people would care about. What's in it for them? Why would they plus one it? Why would they reply? Why would they share it? So let's see. Happy to be on Google Plus. What's your favorite cookie? Asking a question elicits answers. So right now I have no followers, so no one's going to answer it. Someone could stumble upon it with a search, but the point of this is to create some content. If you remember last week, three to five to ten posts that are not directed to anyone, but that's bait to get followers. I'm fishing. I'm putting out bait. I want to get the followers, so I'm going to post some things. Three or five or ten. I would recommend five or ten things so that when people see, okay, this person is about cookies, this person is about pictures of stuff that I care about, this account is putting out coupons or putting out links or putting out interesting co qu quotes. So this is good enough. I'll click post. You might get a pop-up that tells you congratulations or whatever. If not, don't worry, but I posted it. All my zero followers saw it. I'm ready to get plus ones, comments, shares. Yes? If you share, if you sent that to a small group and later decided you want to broaden it, can you then make it public after it's been posted? Uh, oh, good question. I don't believe so. Okay. I'll confirm that in one moment. Okay. Because let's say this, I posted this, whoops, mistake. Remember Twitter? You tweet, it's there. You can't go back and fix it. You can delete it, tweet it again. Google Plus and most other networks let you go back to edit your posts. So I need to fix this, but let's say you needed to as well. Let's say you wanted to change the publicity of it. You can click on the time of any post and you will, you know, you will focus on the post. But if you click on the time of your own post, here's your own post. Here's where you can then see some of the details of it and such. It says it was shared publicly. Can we change that? Uh, no, it just tells you what you did. So it doesn't look like it lets you further change that. And even on the top right corner, we've got these three little dots, vertical dots. So that gives you more options, such as edit post. So if you misspelled something, you can click on the three dots on the top of your own post and go back to edit. But I don't believe it will let you further change the publicity of it. Uh, nope, it still just says this is what you did. So I can go back and fix my text, but notice I can also not add a picture, not add a location. So those other sorts of things you needed to add them at that moment. The only thing it really lets you change is your text. So it doesn't quite let you fix other things. Make a change, click done, and it's updated. some other options we'll look at in a moment but let's say if you did uh, if you did view your tweet and come in total you should have a back button at the top left <coughs> to go back to Google Plus which is the same as going back to home I want to go back home because I want to post another thing you can click the picture directly or you can click what's new and you can attach a picture We've got a few sample pictures that we can borrow from our computer if you'd like. So I'm going to click the picture icon. Select upload a photo. 
if you want one of our sample pictures inside of this open box on the left pane I'm going to go all the way to the top and select pictures and there will be sample pictures pictures sample pictures you can attach more than one let's say I want to upload the koala and the penguin I guess not. You have to select them one at a time. So I'm going to select Koala. I'm going to select another one. I'm going to have two pictures attached to this. There's no limit, like we saw on Twitter, of text for all intents and purposes. There's no limit on your photos. It will automatically make albums for you. Let's say I just want one picture though. So I'm going to attach a picture and I can also add text. I need to carry the koala. Oh, a mascot. You don't always have to be, as I said last time, this about the sale, about me, 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 about buy, about subscribe. You don't have to always be the hard sell. You don't have to be the salesperson all the time. Here, I'm just posting something funny or interesting, eye-catching, whatever, that's fine. You can mix it up. It doesn't always have to be about sales, because when it is, you start to lose followers. When everything you tweet about is buy now again, you're going to lose followers. So here, we're just posting up here something fun. Here's our mascot, a picture. One of the things that we can do also on Google Plus that we cannot do on the other networks is add a little bit of styling to our text. A little bold, a little italics. I can't do that on Twitter easily. Some people, if they know what they're doing, they can do that, but it's complicated. This is one of the ones where you can. I want to bold, for example, carry the koala. I want to make the word carry the koala bold. And the way this will work is we add a, a little bit of very basic markup, which means code, but not, not HTML code like you think. It's simply like this. If I want to make carry the koala bold, what I'm going to do is put the asterisk around what I want to make bold. Start bold here. I'm marking bold here, and I'm ending bold here. Markup. I've marked it. It won't turn bold until I publish it, but that will be bold. I can make italics with underscores, so I can wrap it underscores around words or sentences or paragraphs. Be careful about making your whole paragraph bold, because bold in italics is for emphasis. When you emphasize everything, you've emphasized nothing. So that's going to stand up. Carry the koala is going to be bold. The mascot is going to be italics once you, once you post it. There's one more kind of styling, which is not that useful, but you might think of a term, uh, you might think of a use for it. I'm going to write here. He loves to eat donuts. Uh, but actually, I'm going to cross that out. Not donuts. Eucalyptus. <coughs> If you put a dash, dashes around content, it'll do strike through. It'll like cross it out. Again, that's not that useful most of the time, but let me show you what it looks like. Post. That'll get converted into that. There's bold, asterisks, underscores, italics, dashes, strike through. Is there a quick legend for that? In case you forget. Um, I think somewhere in the help screen you'll find it. So let me write it up here one more time. We've got um, asterisks, asterisks is bold, underscores is italics, and dashes are strike through. So that's it. We don't have anything else like, you know, change the color of my text. We don't have um, 
any HTML code if you're familiar, except for a link. If you add a, a web link, <coughs> it'll make it active. But that's the styling for text. No, we don't have that either. Text. So just these three. Yeah, that's why there's no big, you know, reference for them because it's just these three, really. Remember last week also I mentioned, uh, or did I mention, uh, emoji? Those little uh, cute little symbols that everyone's using, those little smiley faces, the ones with, you know, the big smiling grin and the cat and the dice and all of the emoji. Um, you can get emoji right out of, your, out of your phone nowadays. It's got the keyboard and you can put a little emoji. But you can also go to the web address, getemoji.com. Get emoji.com and then you can search you can copy and paste I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take little bunny girl right here just copy that I selected that one this is at getmoji get emoji.com you can see any of these select them and copy paste because if you want to stand out from the rest this is what the this is what the people are using maybe the younger people but uh, even big companies are using this to stand out, to catch attention, to reach an audience, that, to, to speak with them at, at their language. So that's going to be a copy and a paste. I'll use emoji. Paste. Depending on the person's computer or mobile device, the emoji will look slightly different. The, fam the most famous one is the iPhone emoji, but then Android's got one, Windows has one. They look a little bit different. Everyone's got their own version of the bunny girl, but everyone's going to get the message. Post. If someone sees my post, that's what they'll see. They converted it, those symbols, into the, into the result in an emoji. If you click what's new, one more time, this time I'm going to add a link. This one requires that you have some sort of link, some sort of address. Um, let's say... I'm going to go, if you know the ad, if you know your web address, you can copy and paste it. I'm going to go take a blog post. So this is that. This is just this is just asking for a web link. So if you have simply your web address, that's one thing. But usually you'll be directing people right at your main content, as we saw the other accounts. They might have a picture to catch your attention. A little snippet of the article, and the full article is found at the link. You just add the link here, and that what Google Plus does is it makes the thumbnail for you. It's going to look at that page, it's going to analyze it, it's going to look for a picture, and it'll put a picture. You should be also, you might also be able to cycle through the pictures if you've got more than one picture on that page. And so here it took the thumbnail of that page, it took a little bit of what was written on the page. Post that I can add a little bit more commentary to it, and I'm sharing a link. Have you heard of Peach? Check out this blog all about it. Again, posting something that um, your audience would care about. Maybe to be on message, I would say, um, Peach is the new social network which gives us the, which reminds us, we bake the best peach cobbler. West of the Mississippi. Yeah, 
And there we go. So I post that. My followers would see my little blurb here. They would see the title of the link. They can see the full link when they click on it. It's an active link. It goes directly where you guide them. So pictures, links, location. Location works best when you've actually got uh, a mobile device. This might not be as, as accurate. It's trying to give me Coronado and San Diego Zoo and such. Seaport Village. You can attach uh, you can attach a location. If, if I have this fully set up and my location is here, if I went through that process, I can attach my location and I can say sale this Saturday. In store only. And so that's going to have a link. When people see it on their mobile device, especially, they'll have the link, they can click on it, and it will take them over to, it'll give them a map to get to my location. So this that I'm saying is not that different from Twitter, is it? We're posting stuff three to five to ten kinds of posts, I mean uh, total posts, we have different kinds of posts with a picture, with a link, whatever. If you've got a video, you can attach the link to the video. So this is, this is not that different from Twitter. Some of the differences about this compared to Twitter is that if we click on the time of any of our posts, remember we get the we get the extra options up here. These are some of the differences. We can edit the post. We can't do that on Twitter. We can delete it. We can do that. We've got disable comments, disable reshares, move post to collection. These could be useful. Remember when we used Twitter, I think the question came up, well, what if someone puts something negative? Can I delete it? No. If someone posted something negative, following your tweet? You can't. It's someone else's account. We can't do that. But here, and on Facebook, and other networks, we can control our message a bit more. We can guide the conversation. Even though we, we let, at the moment, anyone post any crazy thing, maybe if people are posting crazy things, I can go in and stop the comments. I can say, no more comments. I get no more comments. I can go in and delete individual comments as well so that people are on message. Yes? I don't have move post to collection. But do you have these other ones? Yes. Hmm, not sure why it doesn't have it. Does anyone, if anyone's looking here, do you not have it also? I'm not sure why, why not. We, I might look at it during the break and see if there's something slightly different. But if I want no more comments, comments are closed, I can turn it off or back on. Sure. If for some reason I don't want this to be shared, I can turn that off. Don't let people share it to their friends or family. Usually you do want that. You want your posts to go out further to more people. But if you need that to be locked down, you can only view my post on my profile. You have to follow me to see my post. You can turn these things off and make them a little bit more locked down if you want. Usually though you're going to be pretty open about it, for a business especially, sharing your posts, sharing your links, sharing all of that for everyone to find it, to follow you, to buy your product, to get to have these cheerleaders for you, cheer for you. Someone else is going to share your stuff to their followers. Go back to home. Home is showing what I've posted and those that I have followed or what's trending. Let's look then in more detail collections. Click on Collections. Now it's starting to perhaps feature some or suggest some. 
So the point of this is I could follow collections to get inspiration. Notice I've also got search at the top. Maybe none of these are really um, none of these are really related to my business. I've got this bakery. I want collections about bakeries. It's suggesting the only food related thing I see so far is this collection about uh, vegetarian Indian cooking. Um, I see technology and animals and science and stuff. None of these are really what my business is about. But you've got search at the top. This is going to search collections. So I'm simply going to search up here, I don't know, cookies. There might be a couple. I'm going to search cookies. I'm going to ignore the suggestions and just press enter. It's finding cookies in collections and in communities and other things. But I want to see collections, so I can say, show me more collections regarding cookies. So I've searched, I get a bunch of results, but I want to see specifically in cookies. So I'm going to say, show me more collections with that keyword. So okay, a bunch that I could follow. The point of me following someone else's collection is mostly inspiration. Um, let's say before I click follow on anything, I'm going to click the thumbnail to see what they're posting. This has got 925 followers, 276 posts from B. And so I could say, okay, this seems interesting. I'll follow this collection. The owner of the collection will be able to see that you are following it. Collections you follow will be displayed on your profile to people you who can who can also see it, and you can change that. So I'll say, okay. What about this one over here? Foods, fruits, cakes, cookies. Let's say follow that. Okay, so. Now, when I followed a few collections and I go back to home, I'm going to start to see the content of these collections eventually. When they post something new, they'll show up here. I can get inspiration. See, that's showing up there. If you were here last week, do you remember? What was one of the first tactics that I talked about to try to get followers? Long tail? Uh, nope, that was the other class in Twitter. Sending somebody else's uh, like tweet or, or uh, YouTube video or whatever, sharing that on your peer network. That's a valuable thing, but there was a step before that, and that was what you had said, which was the follow. We want to follow accounts, and some of them will follow us back. What you said also worked, but we'll get to that one. We want to follow other accounts. So when I'm on home, and especially if I've got stuff trending, I'm going to see here, Victor Elizaroff posted this. On any account that you see, if you click on their profile icon, It'll show you everything about them, what they've posted, that little About Me info box. What we wrote is going to show up like that to people as well, that About information. That's where that shows up. But I'm looking at Victor. He wrote Travel, Photographer, and Multimedia Design from, and then it gets cut off because you have to read more, Montreal, Canada. 44,000 people are following him. He posted this three hours ago, five days ago, etc. So, okay, I'm going to click follow. People and pages that you add to circles, that is, who you follow, will get notified. There's that notification bell at the top right corner. Victor's account got a little red number there. And it says, Victor's Bakery followed you. Same thing like Twitter. If I follow some accounts, some will follow me back. 
That's one of the basic tactics to get followers. Follow accounts, some will follow back. It's not the best tactic. We'll talk about the other ones like we did last time. But that's one way. I can go into home, look who's there, follow some more, like maybe Charlie Hoover. Actually, I, uh, I, I do follow him on my other account. He's kind of a cool guy. I'm going to click follow. I might get a follow back. Back home. I could click to follow several. I wouldn't simply say follow any account that you see because maybe you're not going to want to get the posts that they post on your home screen. You do want to take a moment to preview what they post. You want to go in and see, okay, uh, Francisca, I click on hers. What are they posting? Okay, uh, a lot of animal stuff. I might want to follow because of that or I might not want to. So you do want to take a moment to check the account before you follow. You might not be following what you think you're following. Uh, Cynthia... Click on there. She's got a bunch of collections. She's got a bunch of posts. So again, you can always follow. Let's say I followed an account. I went off and did some stuff. I'm seeing Cynthia's posts. I no longer want to follow. You go back to people. This will list all of those that you're following. You follow three people. I can see them here. I can say, I no longer want to follow Cynthia. I can turn her following off, or I can move her to some other circle. So that's what this whole, pro, uh, this whole people screen is about. Who are you following? How do you have them organized? Stop following them or move them to different circles. Let's see Takeshi here. If I click on his, it's mostly in Japanese, but cool photos. So if you click follow. He got a notification. Victor's Bakery follows you. Best case scenario is then he follows back. If I've got stuff to show for it, if I've got a profile set up, if I've got posts and such, obviously this is just random stuff, so he probably won't follow me. But if you set it up properly, you might get a follow back. And so he's got nearly 8,000 followers. He'd be great if he followed me when I posted some picture of a great looking cookie, he shared it. And now my post reached 8,000. That's the point of getting followers, building more of an audience. And one of the tactics then is for me to follow accounts, some will follow me back. The I don't know the percentage. It's low. What's the percentage of followers that I get from following? It's low. I don't know. It's going to depend on your account, your content, who you're trying to follow. I may be trying to follow someone that has a million followers. They might not follow me back. They're, they, they're too big. They're, they're too popular. They're not going to follow more people. You do. You never know. This, this could be the long way to get followers. I'll show other ways, of course. But this is one way. Follow accounts related to your company, and some will follow you back. Related to that account, I mean to that tactic, is I tried to follow an account over here. I think Charlie had like a million followers or something, or 32,000. So let's say I never get a follow from Charlie. Here's another tactic. Based on Charlie, and we did this on Twitter too, I believe, I can go to Charlie's account. I can see what he's posting. And I'm seeing some of his posts are very popular. 422 plus ones. 194 plus ones. These are people in comments. These are people that are active on his posts. Let's say my account was about, you know, popular culture and science and such, and I wanted to get some of his followers. All of these that have interacted with his posts are ripe for that. Amber. Bill. 
Jody, all of these people. I can, I can go to these people. I can click on his post here from three days ago. This will show me all of these people that have commented, and I can go directly to these people. Lynn. Lynn cared about this enough. I can go to Lynn's profile. Follow Lynn. She might be more apt to follow me because she's going to see that I'm, I'm also posting about pop culture and science or whatever. Whatever she interacted with with the other person first. The other person posted something she cared about and enough to reply. If I then reach out with a follow, I might get a follow. That might be a more effective tactic than simply following randomly. Follow those that are already engaged. I could do this with her as well. She posted this, and then John here, Don over here. You can just keep going down the rabbit hole. Sean, not the Sean White, probably, but Sean White. Um, and I could then follow those accounts, and I might get a follow back. Um, we were going along the lines of uh, collections. This is the same sort of thing here. I could go to wildlife photography, and this one person, Sean, is posting this stuff. And this, I'll probably see people here also being active. So I can use collections that way as well. Magnificence of Mountains. I don't even have to follow the account, I just... Uh, the, the collection. I can view the collection, I can then view who's active, and connect with Alice there. As I start to follow collections, they'll be listed here. I have followed these collections. I wish they would call that following. I am following these connections. It makes it makes a thing like I'm I'm being followed. No, these are the ones that I have followed. These are collections I have followed. <coughs> and then yours. You can create collections. This uh, Google Collections screen here from Featured this is cycling all the time. This is showing random people stuff all the time. The more active you are and such, the more possibility your collection could be featured. There's nothing to stop you from creating a brand new collection here called um, Gluten Free or Amazing Gluten Free Fair. Add a tagline, visibility, one set, this can't be changed, so be careful. Tagline, only the best. And best for you, goodies. Create that. There's a little bit of design you can choose for it, picture and such. Let me just save it. And so now I've got a collection. I'm going to start filling it with stuff I can add co to the collection directly. I can post to no one, which is back on my on my home. I can post two collections, and as I get active here, Google Plus might start to feature my collections. We saw that some of those collections have thousands of followers. That's possibly a way to get more followers yourself. Use collections. To these I can add pictures and links and everything as well. But notice that this is going to be shared to my collection, and that's the icon for collection. I can't put it to, to, a, to a different circle and a collection. It has to go to a collection. And it can only go to one collection at a time. I can't spread that one picture to multiple collections. So you're setting up a collection to keep, it's kind of like a container for things that are important to you about that topic? Yeah. If you use Pinterest, it's like a pin board. I create a board on Pinterest to put specific stuff into. 
same thing here. Like I said, this is sort of, to me, it feels like it's Google's version of Pinterest. I create collections, and then I put what's related or what interests me into that collection. People can follow that collection only if they want, or all my collections, or my whole profile. And this is how I can specify to people. I can put gluten-free stuff here, and then I can put another collection of, you know, chocolate, and everything related to chocolate into that collection. As I'm active here, Google might feature me. And when someone logs into there, Google Plus and the featured collections appear, mine might show up. Especially if I have a great enticing photo right here, not just the generic one. So now when I go back to collections, you know, there's the featured, one day I'll be there. Followed is who the collections I'm following, the collections that I have followed. These are the ones I followed directly, and these are the ones that automatically came in when I followed the main account. When I followed Takeshi, it also came in with, uh, with this ramen um, collection. And this one, uh, Dishi something channel. Um, so it also, it also came in with these other collections that he made. If I no longer want to follow those collections over here, I can remove them. And say no longer follow this one. So I'm not following it anymore. And the ones I created are listed right there. So another tactic to get followers on Google Plus is to create collections and populate them with stuff. Content. Because of all of this, another term for it besides social media is content marketing. Posting out content, pictures, links, sounds, video, articles, presentations, putting content out there related to your business so that search engines or people can find them, giving you traffic, sales, subscriptions, whatever you're trying to do online. Let's take our next break and when we come back, we'll look at the next way that I would recommend to get uh, to get followers, and I think it's the most effective way of all, and one of my favorite of all on Google+. Plus. So it's seven. Uh, it's 8.20, we'll be back at 8.30, and we'll look at the next follow tactic.